Hey fellow SweetScript developers, Eric from Stoic Software here again, and in this video we are continuing our series on transitioning from SweetScript 1.0 to SweetScript 2.0. Uh, in this edition we will look at inline editing with SweetScript 2.0. Before we get started, every video that I create is part of my weekly free effective SweetScript uh, mailing list, where every week, uh, or every day rather, I dig into more examples or answer questions from readers on the video of the week. You can find out more details and get signed up at EffectiveSweetScript.com uh, and there's a link in the description. All right, let's get started. The NetSuite's inline editing feature allows users in the UI to very quickly modify and update the data for a particular record without having to load the entire record on a page, edit the form, then save the record. So you can find inline editing on uh, save search results, on sublists on certain records, and it allows you to change data without having to load an entire record. Now NetSuite developers can also leverage inline editing via SuiteScript's submit fields functionality. So in SweetScript 1.0, this feature is provided by the NLAPI submit field function. And in SweetScript 2.0, we are going back to our n slash record module. Um, as with most of the record functionality we've seen so far, there is a one-to-one -one relationship between the 1.0 and 2.0 inline editing functionality. The 2.0 submit fields function in the record module has the same options provided by the 1.0 function uh, and one additional option, this ignore mandatory fields setting. We can use this function to set a single field or multiple fields on a record. And when we do so, we can determine whether uh, sourcing should occur and whether to ignore mandatory fields. Now, the best way to illustrate the actual usage uh, is going to be through an example. So let's start with a simple example using the after submit of a user event deployed to the sales order record. So I've got the shells of two of a 1.0 and a 2.0 uh, user event here. We are going to use inline editing to set the default shipping item for the associated customer record. Uh, and that'll be based on some custom logic in this uh, get default shipping item function that we're not going to implement here, uh, but you can imagine putting your own custom logic in there. That's all there is on the 1.0 side. We get the customer off the current record. We calculate the appropriate shipping item based on whatever our uh, custom logic might be. If we don't have both a customer ID and a shipping item, we just exit. If we do have both, we will update the shipping item on the associated customer record. On the 2.0 side, Now on the 2.0 side, really the only difference is in how we specify the values that we're updating. So in 1.0, we pass a single string and the corresponding value. In 2.0, there's this values property on the input, and it's just an object of key value pairs, where the key is the ID of the field that we want to set, and the value is the value we want to set in that field. And we can also inline edit multiple fields with a single call. Uh, so let's update our example here to also set a comment on the customer uh, when we update the shipping item. We will also put in here how to specify the sourcing and mandatory fields options, just so you can see what that looks like. Now 
Now in 1.0, in order to set multiple fields, we had to change our field IDs and our values to arrays. And then we had to put corresponding items, or IDs rather, IDs and values uh, in the same position, so in the same order. Makes it a little bit difficult, when you, especially when you get longer lists, to keep track of which value goes with which field. Then we add our sourcing parameter, and I forgot the ignore mandatory fields option doesn't actually exist in 1.0. On the 2.0 side, instead of all that, it's much easier to tell uh, which field goes with which value because all we have to do is add a new key value pair to our values option here. Uh, and now we will set an additional field. So we can just keep adding key value pairs uh, and it's very clear, very obvious which field or which value goes with which field. Then to specify sourcing and our mandatory fields option, we have this options property that we add. And we just uh, set the Boolean flags accordingly. Now as handy and effective as uh, inline editing can be, there are some drawbacks, some limitations. So let's take a look at some of the pros and cons of using inline editing. The largest advantage of inline editing in SweetScript is that it will execute faster and use less governance than the equivalent operation of loading the record, modifying the fields, and saving the record. It also uses less code than that approach, typically. Um, and it works in both standard and custom records. Now, unfortunately, not all fields are inline editable. So first and foremost, inline editing is limited to body fields only. Sublists are not inline editable at all. If you need to work with sublist fields, you will need to load the record and modify them that way. Uh, furthermore, select fields, so dropdowns, and sub record fields, like addresses, are also not inline editable. Again, to work with these fields, you'll need to load the record and modify them that way. Finally, only very specific fields on each record type are inline editable. And in order to determine which one ones are inline editable, you'll have to check the records browser for each record type. Um, and there's a column on there uh, called NLAPI submit field. Um, if that's true, if there's true in that column, the field is inline editable. And if that column is false, um, then that field is not inline editable. That's it for this lesson. Now you have a good idea of how to do inline editing in SweetScript 2.0. If you liked what you saw here, hit that thumbs up button. Go share what you learned with somebody else. Hit subscribe to stay tuned for the rest of my series on transitioning from SweetScript 1.0 to SweetScript 2.0. And as always, thanks for watching. Keep learning, keep sharing, and I'll see you next time.